Guys, today on KMRD Radio Stuff, we're going to be going head to head Battle Royale with four, that's right, four different coaxial cables. We're putting RG8X, RG213, Ultraflex 7 Sahara, and Hyperflex 10 Sahara head to head in a Battle Royale to see what the numbers actually look like compared to what the manufacturer's specifications are. You guys asked for it, I'm delivering. Let's check it out this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. So what are we doing in this video? Well, I've compared Messi and Polony to a bunch of other coaxial cables, but we're only going off the manufacturer's numbers. I want to see what these coaxial cables look like in the real world. So I set up my IC7300 along with a small TYT8600 VHF UHF radio to test every frequency from 80 meters through 70 centimeters on all four of these coaxial cables using an MFJ inline watt meter to test how much power we're getting at the antenna, the end of the coax. Basically the way I'm doing this, I measured each one of my cables, the RG8X, the RG213, the Ultraflex 7 Sahara, and the Hyperflex 10 Sahara, with my Rig Expert Stick Pro to get the length of each individual coax. I then went to Messi and Poloni's coaxial cable calculator, and I went to Times Microwave's coaxial cable calculator. I entered in the specifications for each cable, the length and the frequency, and then I took the number that it says is the percentage of efficiency that we should expect from this, put all this data in a spreadsheet, compared what we see from the manufacturer's calculators versus what I get in actual real world tests. So I put it all in a spreadsheet. I got a whole crap ton of data. I compared all these cables to get against each other. So let's hop on the computer. I'll show you what my findings are and we'll see if these manufacturer's specifications are actually in line with what we get in the real world. So let's dive in and take a look at some data. So here's the Messi and Poloni calculator. And what I did is I, I'm using uh, Ultraflex 7 Sahara and I'm also using Hyperflex 10 Sahara. Now my length of Ultraflex 7 Sahara is 106.8 feet and I measured that using my Rig Expert Stick Pro. So I went through every single frequency from 80 meters to 70 centimeters, put that in here, it's 80 degrees in my room and I, uh, I'm looking at this residual power, okay? So basically 106.8 feet of this coax at 14 megahertz, I should expect 85.1% uh, residual power, okay? Same thing with times microwave, I plugged in RG213 and RG8X, put in the frequencies and put in the lengths of the cable, so my RG213 is 99.28 feet, and we're looking at a cable run efficiency of 85.1%. I then did a control test using a small, small length of Hyperflex 10 Sahara going into the watt meter and then into a dummy load. My radio was at 100 watts for all of the HF through 6 meter frequencies. And then I used a TYT 8600 little tiny VHF UHF radio to get measurements as a, as a baseline, a control for uh, the VHF and UHF frequencies, okay? So now we can take a look at the data and you have an understanding of how I did this test. Uh, we can take a look at the data now and what the results that I got were versus what the manufacturers specify. So here we are comparing Ultraflex 7 Sahara versus RG213. And this is kind of what spawned this test because I've, I've been a big fan of the Ultraflex 7 Sahara and uh, per all of the research that I've done from both of their uh, specified calculators, the Ultraflex 7 actually shows slightly better uh, performance than RG213. Now my numbers are gonna be a little bit different because I'm comparing a 106.8 foot run to a 99.28, but if we put in, uh, in both calculators a 100 foot run, the Ultraflex 7 does show slightly better specifications. So here's the interesting thing that happened. So, so here's the control group here in the power. So basically from four to 50 megahertz, I used my 7300 and this is the baseline number that we're going with. This is the control. And then for UH, uh, VHF, I got 21.87 watts and 17.86 watts, okay? So I then took the specified percentage of efficiencies from both manufacturers. So Messi and Poloni specifies at four megahertz, I should get 90.7% efficiency and uh, times microwave specifies I should get 91.9, .9, okay? I then took this watts expected column and divided these two numbers into one another. So I should expect 102.64 watts uh, with 100 watts going into this cable at 106.8 feet. What I actually got was this column here in the measured power. So I actually got 101.75, which means that I only have 89.92% efficiency with a difference of 0.78% between what uh, Messi and Poloni's calculator specifies and what I actually got. 
And we did the same thing over here with the RG213. So times microwave specifies 91.9%, .9%, which means I should expect uh, if I'm putting 113 watts in, at the end of that run, I should get 103.99 watts. What I actually got was 104.66, which made on that frequency 92.49% effective. Uh, so it was actually a half a percent higher than what they specified. And you'll notice as this column goes down here from the Times Microwave, all of these percentages are, are pretty darn close to what the manufacturer actually specifies. Whereas we look, look at this column from Messi and Poloni, we can see, well, we go from anywhere from 0.78 to 4.75% difference and an average of 2.2% uh, difference in efficiency across all these frequencies. So there's, there's a bit more variable from the Messi and Poloni calculator than there is from the Times Microwave calculator of which are on RG213, they're only off by 0.07% on average. And this column here, we can see I averaged out or didn't average out, but I subtracted the uh, measured power from RG213 from the measured power from the Ultraflex 7 Sahara. So all of these measurements are for RG213. And this is how many watts RG213 beat the Ultraflex 7 by with an average of 1.77 watts across all the frequencies, okay? This column going across here has nothing to do with any of these columns vertical, but what I did is I averaged out both of these two columns, and then I came up with a percentage of the actual measured efficiency difference. So what the watts that I'm expecting versus the watts that I actually got uh, were off uh, minus 1.72 watts from what Messi and Poloni actually, actually specifies uh, versus 0.16% uh, between the times microwave calculator. So the, the uh, Messi and Poloni calculator uh, definitely does not appear to be uh, as, as accurate. So let's, uh, let's take a look down here at Hyperflex 10 Sahara versus RG213. Now I do want to back up a second. Ultraflex 7 is three millimeters thinner than RG213, and they're almost identical. You're, you're off, uh, the most is 2.91 watts. You have a difference of 1.77 watts on average between the two, okay? So very, very comparable cables. And uh, for a much thinner cable, the Ultraflex 7, that's an incredible amount of performance from that cable. So I don't wanna focus too much on how off their calculator is, that it is. I really wanna focus on how close these two cables are for being so far apart in physical characteristic. I think that's astounding that Messi and Poloni has actually uh, done such a good job with that cable. So let's get back to Hyperflex 10 Sahara versus RG213. Now we're looking at the same size physically, the, the coaxial cable. They're both 10 millimeter coaxial cables, okay? So here we can see just right off the bat, uh, I took the RG213 actual measured power, subtracted it from the Hyperflex 10 Sahara, and note that both of these are darn near 100 foot cable. So we're, we're pretty much comparing apples to apples right here. So we can see that uh, RG213 lost to the Hyperflex 10, but not by as much as I would expect. Only a difference of about three watts on average across all of the frequencies did Hyperflex 10 best the RG213. But again, note uh, the percentages, whoops, <laughs> note the percentages uh, in this column here, all of these numbers are pretty darn accurate from what times microwave specifies. We only have a difference of 0.07% uh, versus what, for what times microwave claims versus a 3.2% variable on average from Messi and Poloni. And it really gets exemplified here when we look at uh, two meters and 70 centimeters we have a 7.61% uh, variable and an 11.65% variable. And, and these are really the differences from what they claim. Uh, so they claim 71.3% efficiency. We got 63.69 and 54.2 versus 42.55. So these numbers are way off. It, it's still a slightly more efficient cable. We only got 6.2 watts out versus 7.6 watts uh, on, on uh, 70 centimeters. But these numbers are grossly inaccurate still a better cable but we have to take their calculator uh with a little bit of uh, a, a little small grain of salt so that's the difference between uh hyperflex 10 sahara and rg213 then for giggles i decided to compare ultraflex 7 sahara to rg8x those are more 
similar in in size okay and rg8x is a very common cable a lot of folks have it that uh, was my first cable i used uh, rg8x for hf for many many years so here we can see uh obviously rg8x lost compared to ultraflex 7 especially here when we're looking at uh like 12 uh 12 meters 10 meter where are we 12 meters 10 meters and six meters but uh not uh, not as huge a difference as I would have expected. And again, we've got uh, a, a reported difference of only 0.82% versus minus 2.2% in the actual difference between what the company specifies. So still getting more efficiency out of the Ultraflex 7. It still is a better uh, coaxial cable by far. But uh, yeah, I, I think we need to revamp that Messi and Ploney calculator to make it a little more accurate. But here we can see, I mean, when you're looking at 146 megahertz, we're still 54% efficient versus 36.9% efficient. And then on 70 centimeters, 33 versus, I mean, RG8X, you're 14.67% uh, efficient from what I actually got. So not very good cables for uh, uh, 70 centimeters, either one of them. So Next, we're comparing Ultraflex 7 Sahara to Hyperflex 10 Sahara to see what the differences are there. Here we can see Hyperflex 10 Sahara did beat out the Ultraflex 7 Sahara. And uh, again, keep in mind the actual measured uh, efficiencies here because these are really the numbers that matter. The watts so much don't matter uh, as much as the actual efficiency. So when we start getting down here into the, the 2 meters and 70 centimeters, you know, this is, these are the frequencies you really start losing efficiency. We're still 78% efficient on uh, 6 meters with the Hyperflex 10, and we're still 73% efficient with the Ultraflex 7 Sahara. So for HF, uh, phenomenal cables uh, with the, Ultra, the Hyperflex 10 Sahara. This is what I run for VHF and UHF, and still 63% uh, efficient and 42% efficient. Is, uh, is okay. So if I put out 100 watts, I'm still getting 42 watts to the antenna, and then my antenna has gain. So uh, I'm actually getting probably about 80 watts out at the antenna if I were to put uh, 100 watts into it. So do remember we are putting in low power into the uh, coax at VHF and UHF, not 100 watts. And lastly, just for giggles, I decided to compare Hyperflex 10 Sahara to RG8X. And here's where you can really see the comparisons, why you don't want to use RG8X for VHF and UHF. You've got 63.6% .6 efficiency on two meters versus 36.9%, and then 42% efficiency versus 14% efficiency on 70, uh, 70 centimeters. So uh, you're, you're certainly losing a lot. And you're, you're losing a lot more in uh, just pure watts, especially on six meters here. You're, you're 22 watts different between RG8X and Hyperflex 10 Sahara. And I don't know about you, but I would rather have my antenna system be as efficient as possible. So uh, in this case, I would pick the Ultraflex, uh, or excuse me, the Hyperflex 10 Sahara. So RG8X has its place. It's cheap, it's thin, it's easy to work with. It's, it's, it's decent on the HF bands. Like I said, I used it for years and uh, worked all over the world, but uh, there certainly are better options. So there we have it, gang. That's the real world data, the hard, the hard stuff. <laughs> Let me know what you think. You like these kind of videos? You want to see more of them? I like doing this kind of sciencey, nerdy stuff. Also, let me know what you think I might could do to maybe improve these tests. I mean, I don't really have any other kind of test equipment, so I don't know what I'd do, but uh, you know, I'd like to see what uh, your guys' thoughts are. And oh, wait, hang on, we're not done. I've got this big roll of LMR 400 to test out. Uh, I want to compare this with Messi and Ploney's Airborne 10 because that is like the Mama Chapina of all coaxes. It's like LMR versus uh, Airborne 10 at this point. So we're trying to see is Airborne 10 the actual LMR 400 killer that Messi and Poloni state. So I don't know, hopefully uh, I can get a roll of that from uh, Stefano and uh, we'll test that out. But uh, I think this is a really fascinating test. I, I really spent like literally all day yesterday just testing every single cable, every single frequency. There was literally coax just all throughout my house because <laughs> there's like hundreds of feet of coax to test so i don't know uh but yeah i wanted to share these real world results and and see what we could actually get in the real world versus uh the uh, what the manufacturers specify so guys don't forget to like share and subscribe you can also follow me on twitter at k8mrd and uh we will see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff 73 guys